Hey everyone, Token Dave over here, the dorky token black guy who's just trying to get by. It's 2019, yes, out with the old, in with the new, wait a minute. This is the last full year of my 30s. Oh God, I'm getting old, oh God. <laughs> you know what, let's be positive. New year, new possibilities. And speaking about getting old and being positive, let's talk about the first movie of my favorite action movie series, Lethal Weapon. Roger Murtaugh is a straight-laced homicide sergeant for the Los Angeles Police Department who's just turned 50 and is considering retiring. Retirement sounds really good for Roger when he discovers that the victim of the latest case he's working on is the daughter of a longtime friend of his. To make matters worse, he is forced to partner with Sergeant Martin Riggs, a highly trained ex-Special Forces soldier who is a completely mentally unstable loose cannon due to the recent death of his wife. During the investigation, the two end up being at odds with a drug cartel operated by ex-military mercenaries, causing Riggs to start enjoying himself with this case while Murtaugh is getting too old for this. So I know Christmas was about a month ago, but this is one of those movies I usually watch for Christmas because I, I don't have the holiday spirit. I am very cynical around Christmas time. In fact, every time I hear Jingle Bell Rock, I think about a prostitute doing coke and then committing suicide by jumping off a building. Yeah, that got dark really quick, but that's the beauty of Lethal Weapon. It is has very, very dark themes and moments, but it is done very subtly and is contrasted with the setting of Los Angeles and the chemistry, or the magical chemistry, I must say, from the leads. We have Danny Glover, you know, as worn down by the book, yet, you know, very welcoming and warm Sergeant Murtaugh. You know, contrast with Sergeant Martin Riggs, played by Mel Gibson, who is basically only good at killing people and being a cop. And he had his light taken away when his wife died. And this has caused him to act recklessly and causing people to think that he's either suicidal or he is just trying to get uh, pension for mental instability. Now, to be honest, I understand the Riggs character a little bit better than most because I grew up around a lot of negativity, death, darkness, you know, not because of my skin, mind you, you know, New York City in the 80s and 90s, not a pretty place. And I ended up falling in love and getting engaged in my early 20s and regretfully um, she was a crime victim and yeah so that one bright spot that I had with it surrounded by like you know instability uncertainty darkness it was taken away from me and I uh, you know I got more reckless in my life and I ended up not caring about much things especially in my own life. So I can understand where the Rick character, kept, you know, what they were portraying. And, you know, I understand the Riggs character. But be that as it may, you know, you find that Riggs does want light in his life. And, you know, and you end up seeing that as the relationship between Riggs and Murtaugh blossoms, which, again, magical chemistry between Gang Glover and Mel Gibson. And yes, you'll hear me say the word magic a lot when I talk about these movies. This movie also has an amazing character actor cast of individuals from the 80s. You know, I can't talk about them all for time purposes, but I'm going to focus on Tom Atkins, you know, who plays Michael Hunsaker, the father of the deceased, you know, friend of Murtaugh, but yet you can tell that there's something a little off with him. You know, come on, Tom Atkins, Halloween 3, The Fog, Creep Show, Escape from New York, 
awesome, awesome actor, and I can't believe, you know, he is not a star in mainstream, but he is just awesome. Another awesome character actor in this movie is Al Leong, you know, who plays Endo, the torturous, you know, mercenary. Now, I didn't get to talk about him in Big Trouble in Little China, but you see Al Leong a lot in the movies from the 80s and some in the 90s. Heck, you know, he was in this, Big Trouble in Little China, Die Hard. He was also in Godzilla 1998. Anyway, but we got awesome, awesome actors, awesome characters, plus the movie itself is written very well. The dark tones, you know, are very, very subtle. And in fact, not only are the dark tones subtle, a lot of things in the movie that end up being important are subtle. You know, like in the beginning, you see shadows near the car where, you know, the victim dies at. You see where Riggs is about to take his life, but he ends up saying, you know, while I was looking at a picture of his wife, he ends up saying, I'll see you later. I'll see you much later. Those small little hints and subtlety, you know, are very important in the development of the movie, which really, really is written extremely well and paced out fairly well. Plus, the action sequences don't overly drag on, which is something that a lot of movies ended up doing. If I have any complaints about this movie, that's one, the villains. Now, not saying that Gary Busey or Mitchell Ryan were bad in their roles. They weren't. But they weren't as entertaining or as engaging. Especially since, you know, uh, Gary Busey, who plays Mr. Joshua, is supposed to be the Yang to Riggs's Yang. And a personal thing that drove me nuts were the martial arts. They made a big deal about Riggs being a martial artist. Heck, even Danny Glover drop down that, you know, you know, Tai Chi and all that other killer stuff or no guns, no jujitsu because Mel Gibson is a Tai Chi practitioner and apparently he was a Brazilian jujitsu practitioner, but some of the techniques and the way his hand movements, especially his little chokehold towards the end of the movie, those are actual judo or Japanese jujitsu moves. More ju judo-like, but then judo is a derivative of ju Japanese jujitsu. But I digress. You know, a lot of the martial arts movements were executed poorly, you know. But those are just nitpicks compared to awesome characters, great acting, excellent pacing, awesome writing, and a really entertaining and enjoyable ride. Lethal Weapon is slamming. A very, very high slamming, considering that it gave us one of the best, you know, catchphrases of all time. Agree? Disagree? Please drop me a comment below, give me a like, follow me on Facebook at Token Dave, or on Twitter and Instagram at Token Dave 80. If you haven't watched Lethal Weapon, please watch it yesterday, or if you haven't watched it in a while, watch it as well as the other movies in the series, because I am going to be tackling all four movies this year. Later, everyone.